so what's going on? We're going to talk about a very fun game that I had the pleasure of kind of stumbling into on accident, and I have to thank GameStop for that for having this on sale. Uh, so those of you who know me a little bit outside of YouTube, I've talked about Villainous pretty regularly, and honestly, it's a game that um, I don't think it gets enough praise. And I want to talk about it. This really isn't going to be like an in-depth break it down where I go into really how a game's going to go. Rather like a look at it as well as the extras, but we'll get to that later. So let's get into well, what exactly is Villainous? Why is it Disney Villainous? Well, it's a licensed product from Disney uh, distributed through uh, Ravensburger. And what Villainous is, it's a two to six player game, and that's if you get the, the core version right here. The worst takes it all. I can never remember that at the bottom, but I just call it the core version because it's the only one that comes with six, and then there's the expansions, and then there's the new, the new one, which we'll talk about at the end. So basically, how this works is really cool. You assume the role of a Disney villain. And for the sake of... Um, for the sake of this video, I've already chosen what I need, so basically how this game is going to work is like this. You're going to each get your own really cool player boards. They all unfold into neat little places with special locations from the movies they're from. You get a player piece that is significant to that villain. You're going to get currency to start off, and you're going to need it because you're going to be buying a lot of stuff in this game. You're also going to be get, getting two different decks of cards to play with, and we'll get more into that in a minute when I show the setup. But the really cool thing about this game is um, the idea behind it. It's like, this is a hand management game, and that's really the best way I can describe it. Like, you draw cards and you use cards to complete your own specific objectives. Now the cool thing about this is that every single character in this game has their own different objectives. Yeah, so we're not all trying to achieve like one goal, trying to get to X amount of points or trying to capture this many, you know, t uh, cities. No, this is very different. Like the character I have, little John, his objective is to start my is to start a turn with 20 power, which are the currency in this game. If I start the turn with 20 power, I automatically win the game. You have other character characters in this, like um, like Ursula. If you start the turn and you have the trident and the crown in your own domain, you win the game. Um, with Captain Hook, I believe it is... With Captain Hook, I believe it's... Defeat Peter Pan in Neverland, and then you win the game. Um... Maleficent is you have to have a curse in every domain. Uh, Jafar is you have to have the lamp and the genie um, in uh, Jafar's area. Uh, Queen of Hearts is you need to have four wickets and then take the shot, which uh, well, it's a little weird, but basically what you're just converting characters into something called wickets, and then you, you, just, you volley a shot at the player, and it's... It sounds more confusing than what it is, but really all it is is you draw cards off the top of your deck, and if the amount of power is less than how much the converted power cost of all of your wickets, uh, then you successfully win. And then, um, of course, there's, you know, Prince John. So, Villainous, why do I talk about it so much? Really because it's, it's a pretty straightforward game. It is a little complex to learn, but in all honesty... Um, once you get it, like, once you get that first game out of the way, and I tell this to everybody I teach games, I'm like, the first game is usually going to be your, the, the toughest one because you're learning everything, and I'm very much the kind of person where I'm, I'm very trial by fire, and I'll do everything I can to help people out, but the thing here is that when it comes to Villainous, it's a little bit more than just following, like, a paint-by-number scenario, like, there's, like, when we get into the breakdown, you'll understand what I mean. Like, it's not a linear direction to get to the end of the game. And that's one thing I really like about it. No two games are the same. All the characters have are different. And then when we get to the expansions over here, it turns into something crazy all in itself. Um, 
And then when we get down to the pros and the cons, that will kind of break down as to, like, why I love this versus why you may not like this. So let's get right into uh, Villainous, and I'll show you uh, the basic setup. So this right here is your basic setup of every game. You're going to have your two decks, your Fate deck and your standard player deck right here. It doesn't really matter where they are, although uh, it might be easier to keep them close, although some people like to play with it over here. Again, it really doesn't matter. Uh, the rules specify where it goes, but honestly, it, as long as it, you know it's comfortable to the player, depending on righty, lefty, OCD, you name it. You got your character piece, which every character you play as, it's going to be specific. So as Prince John, you know, got to have the, got to represent with a little royalty uh, crown. And I almost want to call that a little, a little chalice, have you. The board itself, and everyone has their own custom board, and it has different locations that pertain to that character in that movie. Uh, it's really cool. They all fold up, so it makes it really easy to take them wherever, and uh, they'll have, like, little quotes from the movie. And there goes that chalice. <laughs> Trying to do this one-handed is awesome. And you'll have power, which is basically your in-game currency. Whoever goes first, I believe, only gets one, whereas the uh, next player to go gets two. You, of course, can make modif modifications to that if you so please, but I recommend just sticking to the rules. And the cool thing is that every one of these games has these. It tells you what every single character's objectives are to win. No one has the same objective as I'd already said. And this way, no one can play in secret. Everyone knows how the other player has to win. But the other cool thing is that on the back, it shows you what the action symbols are. And this is going to be really important as soon as my camera wants to focus. And this basically is going to show you how to play the game. It's really simple. So we'll keep that kind of right up here. And I always recommend to people who are playing for the first time, keep keep that close by. It's okay. Uh, you're not going to remember everything right off the bat, and there is going to be a lot of strategy involved. So how each turn works is very simple. When you're starting the game, you move to any location on the map, unless uh, some characters have a location that's locked, which will be um, noted. There will be a little lock icon on this last level. Now, Prince John does not have that, so we don't have to worry about it. However, some characters like Jafar and Ursula, I know they have that, and you have to unlock them by meeting certain criteria or playing a certain card. So just remember, if it's you're starting the game and it's, and it's locked, you can't go there uh, until you unlock it with other cards. So I would move to any one location on here. It doesn't matter where it is, again, as long as it's not locked. Uh, and let's say, for instance, uh, let's go to Sherwood Forest right here. So you notice there are only four icons. And you have an option to play all four icons, or you can play no less than uh, one icon. Or in some situations, you may not be able to play either, and that's only if you're in big trouble. But um, you definitely want to take as many as you can. Now, what do these do? Let's go up here to the action symbols. So you see right here we have a, a little symbol with a one in it. And that's a gain power action. And what you'll do at that point is you'll gain one power. Like over here it says two, and then over here it says three. You'll gain one power, and there's like a little pool of these tokens in the middle of the table that all players grab from. You just take however many you need, so you get one. You have this right here, which is play a card. So you would play a card from your hand, like you start the game with four cards. And just for the, we'll just play them right here. Um, and you can play any one of these cards as long as you have that number worth of power already on your side of the table. So if I were to gain one power and I already had one power, then I, I you know, I'd, I'd have two to start the game. And I, I could play any one of these cards that have, you know, two or zero. I, I couldn't play that guy yet. He's got three. Um, but however, one thing to remember is that you can only play a card based on how many icons are in that realm. Like over here, you'll see two icons with that, meaning you can play two cards from your hand as long as you have the power to play them. Over here you can only play one, so I can only play one card from my hand on my turn. Over here is the discard option, as I'm getting it. Discard cards, basically it just means you can pitch one, two, three, or your whole hand and draw that many back. It's a good way to cycle out the cards in your hand if you have a bunch of stuff that doesn't help you. Now you'll notice that sometimes when you're playing, you might get a card like this, where it doesn't have a power uh, cost 
up here in the top left hand corner. These are special like cards. Uh, these are condition cards, meaning that they have to be met. The prerequisite has to be met in order for you to play them. Like here, it says on your opponent's turn, if another player has six or more power, you may play this card. You basically play it for free and you gain three power. So, you know, if I had two and while my opponent were to have six, I could then play greed and I get three more. And uh, keep in mind, everyone's objective is different. Like in Prince John, I need to start my turn with 20 power. So I'm going to need as much help as I can. And then once you've completed all of the options in here, or is, you know, if there's one you don't have to, because you don't have to do all of them, then you simply end your turn and your opponent does the same. This action right here is really important. So let's say somebody lands on this that you're playing against. That is the fate option. That's where this deck comes into play. Your opponent is then going to draw two cards off the top of this deck. They're going to look at them and they're going to decide and they're going to decide what to play against you. Now, since we're starting the game, um, we can't really play anything that you know attaches to uh, a hero because we don't have one. However, you can play this, which means take up to four power from the Prince John and put on any one hero. And when that hero is defeated, it goes back. So. Uh, for sake of argument, you know, let's say, uh, you know, let's say somebody played King Richard and that's where they would put it. They would put it in any one of these four realms in these areas that are looking like they're blocking two symbols. And that's exactly what they're doing. Once a hero was played in any uh, realm, it blocks those two symbols and those symbol, two symbols are 100% unusable until the hero is vanquished. So as far as I were to go here again, I can only play a card and play fate against my opponent. So um, if King Richard was here and then they decided to play fate again, then basically what would happen is they would take, you know, as many pow as up to four and then put it on King Richard. And again, that's just buying time to make sure I do not start my turn with 20. So that's, that's what that is. So fate is a good way to slow down your opponent so they can't get to their objective, objective as fast. So let's talk about some other symbols. Uh, moving over here, uh, we got two play a card options as well as this right here, which is a move an item or ally card. Meaning that your help, which are gonna be you know down here in each of these different realms. Like let's say I decided to play an ally and uh, it's Sir Hiss. And it says if Prince John is at Sir Hiss's location, you perform one action that is covered by a hero at that location. So again, if you know uh, Prince John was over here and he was covering these, if I were to play Sir Hiss, I can then play one of the actions that he's that Prince. Uh, um, or I'm sorry, no, Prince John, the character. He basically he would be able to play one of the uh, actions at a location that's being covered by a hero. So that's really cool. But um, if I were to go here and decide to do the move an item or ally option, I can move him either uh, one space to the right or one space to the left. And the reason I'm doing that is because maybe I'm getting ready for a vanquish option, and I'm just setting up here for for instance, and then be in the next spot over. That little mine right there is the vanquish option. That is how you get rid of heroes and for that to work your allies need to have at least in equal numbers and you can have multiple down here equal to that number there their their, their toughness or their life as they would say now right now sir hiss is at two whereas uh king richard is at five so i would lose sir hiss and king richard would still be there however i can add to them and if i were to play another ally like rhino guards that gives me six. So if I were to then move over here and perform the vanquish option, then I would lose them. But uh, King Richard would also be gone. And then um, any items that were stored on him get uh, brought back to me. Now over here is much of the same. However, there is another option which is not currently on this board and it is the uh, move a hero option. And basically what that does, um, is and again this wouldn't work here because there is no move an option or move a hero option on prince john's board this allows you to move him either one space to the right or one space to the left uh, and one thing i do have to say is that if anything's located on like the different corners you can't like say you're moving it you know to the to the left and it goes over here no that's not how it works if it's on the corners it can only move in the direction that's open so just just know that so that's pretty much how it works um, 
You'll notice in Prince John, he, he has a space over here that doesn't have any actions. That's because there's cool little cards in here, which I'll, you know, I'll let you explore on your own that let you do really cool things like uh, having bounties and being able to store heroes over here so you can play the rest of your board unblocked. But yeah, once you start the turn and you ha as Prince John and you have 20 of those in hand, you win the game. And that's just a taste of what playing a character is like. So guys, that is Villainous. And that was just one character. This core game alone, which goes for about $35, has six. They're pretty straightforward. Some of them do have a little bit of a learning curve. I'd argue that Jafar and Ursula are the more harder ones to understand, whereas like the Queen of Hearts and Prince John are the more easier of the ones. But all in all, if there is an, a two-player game that I can recommend to anyone and you love Disney, this is it. This is tons of fun. It is competitive, but it's not so competitive to the point where you, you're going to want to, you know, you know, stab each other in the back um, at any point, although that may happen in the game. So, it is, you know, the aesthetic of it I really do like. The quality is really, really nice. Like, each of the different uh, player pieces are pretty well made. They're not extremely ornate or detailed. I will say that they might have could have gone the extra mile on some of the miniatures, but honestly, they do what they need to do, and they need to. They mean being able to distinguish which character they belong to. Um, I will say, as far as the the cons for this game, if you're something, if you're somebody that's you know really isn't too much into like the overall aesthetic or like maybe the theme of surrounding the game, and Disney really isn't your thing. Um, I'd say you might not be into it, but at the same time, if you're the kind of person that likes, you know, hand management games where you need the right cards in your hands to do the right things, I'd say give it a shot. The only other negative I can really say about this game is that the games are not very long, depending on how fast the people are playing. So if you're like the kind of person that really loves to get into those meaty several hour games, you might want to give this one an overlook. Um, however, you play with more people, the longer it will take. Uh, this game is fantastic to play at two players. I played this. Um, I was, I think, I was actually eight, managed to play a six or seven player game. Now, keep in mind, this says up to six, but I was teaching this to my nephews and some relatives, and I think with myself playing, that brought the number up to about six or seven. So, it's doable. Just let's not push it too far over there. Um, price point is on there for what you're buying. Disney products, I. I mean, the other day I saw, like, a plushie of Mickey Mouse for, like, $40, and it was just a plushie. Um, for what you're getting, you're definitely getting your money's worth. The quality of the game is good. The board games are good. Um, I actually have every different, like, I have this game and then all the expansions plus the new Marvel one. Um, so I have a neat little, like, care, uh, storage container, which maybe I'll show that in um, the next video, which, you know, um, that'll be fun, too. Um, uh, transportation is easy. I kind of forgot where I was going there. Tra uh, transporting this game is easy. Honestly, just keep it in the box. Um, you can even store other uh, characters in there too. It's really just the transporting of the cards, and um, I want to make sure this stuff lasts. <clears throat> I will say that's one area that this they really could have maybe done better in is um, while the cards are of decent quality and they don't rip that easy, I feel like a good tug on them in the wrong direction could maybe bend them or perhaps even rip them if you really are dedicated to doing damage to it. But why would you? This game is awesome. So that's the core game. Next time, we're going to be talking about not one, not two, but three of the expansions. And you'll notice that this one right here is a little different. That's because this was a Target exclusive that I pre-ordered for when it came out back in February or March through Target, and really it all is just a special character in a sleeve. But anyway, uh, that'll be part two of Villainous. When that comes out, I do not know. Let me know what you thought in the comments below about Villainous. Do you think it'd be a game that you could play? Um, do you think 35 is a good price point for a six player game? I certainly think it does. These are a little different. These are not six player. These are each three. And the cool thing is that if you, you know, if it's just you and one other person playing, or maybe like a kid, uh, you and your significant other and your child, and the cool thing about these is that each of these expansions, they're about $25 a piece, 
and they come with three characters and you don't need to have the original version to play these. These are also standalone games. Again, they're only three pieces, but again, if you're keeping around that two player mark, that's just fine. So part two, we'll be talking about these bad boys and to wrap up this whole villainous extravaganza, I'm going to be looking at the new venture forward and I don't know, maybe we'll get another Marvel villainous game after this. This actually just released and um, I really get to try it. Although I'm curious to, you know, as to what it was supposed to be and what it is now. But later on, guys, that's going to do it for this. Let me know what you think in the comments below and always game on.